Any second now. Okay. I do believe maybe 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 we should be connected on Facebook and YouTube for anybody who's listening there um and we are live in the Meaning of Life Designs Zoom room. It is so good to see everybody. Let me just make sure that we are actually recording. Yes, we are. Okay. So let me find the chat and pop that up so that I can see what you guys are saying. And then we can get started for real. Okay. I don't know about you guys, but I need to take a deep breath after all of that <laughs> and maybe get a power pose in. We haven't done that for a really long time. So if you remember, Amy Cuddy is the presence lady and she does this power pose, which I find just is a really good stretch as well. Gets you kind of set up for the next step, whatever the next step is. So, let's see. We have, I got to organize my screen here a bit so I can see questions at the same time. We do have some questions and we had, um, we had a question that was a kind of follow on from something that we talked about last week and um, we were talking about template plastic and how I was using that for the heart to heart quilt and might be using it for the awakened heart quilt. I have, I, I am so happy to say right now that, let me just see, I don't know what is going on with my Zoom. It wants to um, spotlight everything else but me. Okay, there we go. Just in case anybody's watching the recording later. So I had picked out what I thought was a beautiful fabric for the Awakened Heart Quilt a while back. I had emailed Michael Miller and said, hey, what do you think? They said, yes, we'd be very happy to send it to you. <laughs> and, and then it didn't arrive and it didn't arrive and it didn't arrive. And I emailed and I said, where is it? And they said, oh, we're sending it. And it still didn't arrive. I'm like, well, did they stop loving me or what the heck? You know, do you ever get those things when somebody says they'll do something and then it looks like they don't and you think they've stopped loving you? Am I the only one that does that? Um, I really have to get over that. Anyway, I had a little flash of insight yesterday afternoon. And I texted my old neighbor or not my old neighbor. Well, yes, my old neighbor, but they are the people who bought my old house and said, did you by any chance get a package for me? And she said, yes, we did. We've been so busy. I forgot to tell you. So it's been sitting on their doorstep or it had been delivered and they stuck it somewhere and forgotten about it. So I have it right here. It's actually a great big mass of fabric. I love these colors. I hope you do too. It's um, these top five fabrics here are um, the Michael Miller Enchanted Garden Collection. Actually, not this one on the top, but the, these guys here. I really wanted to put some prints in. I don't usually work with prints. And I had seen these and just fallen in love with them. And then picking some colors out, I wanted to do something different. And so we were using the, like, we chose to use the garden pin dot fabric, which has these little teeny tiny little dots on it. And um, this is the darker one. And I actually love it. You might see this odd bod here. I wanted to have a darker pink and um, they didn't have any of the darker pink on the pin dots. So we've got this odd bod one in there. Um, So... Golly, that made the table shake, putting that down. Um, I am excited. I finally get to get this quilt stitched up and 
to you and the applique version of the designs for the Awakened Hearts. So we had a fabulous time last Friday at the Awakened Hearts Stitch Out. I love what everybody has been posting in the Facebook group, um, what, what they worked on during the Stitch Out. So if you haven't yet had a look, check that out. Uh, they're just beautiful hearts coming up that people have made. Um, Juliana actually decided to make them as coasters, which I had not thought about. And I love that idea. And it's a super simple, uh, a, a super simple little change, especially on the, um, on the little guys, instead of having a back with a zipper in it, a back and a back lining, if you were to eliminate what I call a back, which is the minky and just use the back lining, um, without a zipper in it you've got a turning hole here turn it inside out beautiful coaster um heart shaped so i definitely will be making up some of those i know that juliana has been making up some as well already and gifting them to the elves in her community which i think is just such a beautiful idea so let's see we are going to check out some of the questions that were submitted um linda let me see linda is not here right now but she was asking about um quilting specifically the butterfly which is why i've got the butterfly quilt hanging up back here um so for quilting, Aurifil 50 weight thread on the top, actually any em embroidery we use, we're typically using Aurifil 50 weight cotton maco on the top and superior bottom line in the bobbin. The bottom line is if you are doing um, embroidery, so applique, machine embroidery or machine applique, not for the quilting. And I specifically love um, this one color, it's called 619, it's number 619. Um, the color name is tan. I buy that and I use that for pretty much everything in, in the bobbin when I'm doing machine embroidery applique. There's no need to change. It goes with just about everything. There are two situations where I might consider using something else. That is if I'm stitching with white thread on a white background, in which case I would actually put bottom line white in the bobbin so that everything is white, just in case you get that little tiny glitch and there's a little bit of bobbin thread comes up to the top. The other situation is if I'm stitching in black thread on black fabric in which I'd put black bottom line in the bobbin. And again, that's if you just get that odd little glitch of tension and you get a little bit of bobbin thread up to the top, you don't want it to be visible. So. Bottom line is actually a 60 weight polyester thread. I It's my absolute favorite for bobbin thread when you're doing machine embroidery applique. And this one color tan works fabulously for um, everything except for those two um, very specific situations. So I buy it on the cone. It lasts. Um, depending on how much stitching you're doing it, it will last you for a little while but that is the bottom line tan in the bobbin if you are doing applique now if you're doing quilting then I would put the same color arfil on the top and in the bobbin even if you are using a polyester thread on the top to do your quilting if you're using isocord or the Floriani polyester on the top to do the quilting, I would more than likely put a matching color of Aurifil 50 weight in the bobbin for the quilting. Now, why have the same color or a matching color? Again, if it's so much easier to deal with your tension if you have the same thread in the top and the bottom. Now, it is possible to get your tension so that it's, the, the 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 way the threads connect they kind of do that and you want that looping part to be in the middle of the batting it is possible to achieve that with your embroidery machine and we have a tension sampler design which is included in uh, at least our block of the month projects um 
so that you can determine what is the correct tension when you're doing quilting in the hoop. It's not necessarily going to be the exact same tension that you have for, um, for doing your applique. Now, Linda had asked, what color thread did I use to quilt this particular quilt? And it's this one here. It is Aurifil 3320. It's one of my favorites. It's, uh, I don't know if we can get the camera to focus specifically on this, maybe. Um, it's a very subtly variegated green. It's, um, it's it's kind of hard to tell unless you're actually close up to it, but it's very it's kind of like a pale green through cream, and you can see on here you can just about see the quilt. And this fabric is actually Michael Miller's. Um, no, it's not. It's grunge. Um, grunge, and the color is white. Interestingly enough, it actually has a very pale green. Um, kind of mottled effect and this color just looks beautiful on there it kind of pulls out the green that's in the white of the fabric and at the same time it is not glaringly obvious so the closer you get to the quilt the more visible the actual thread of the quilting is so um so 3320 it's this beautiful variegated green and I've actually used that on so many projects um we're always running out so okay let's see whoops didn't mean to press that button um juliana juliana I'm coming to ask you to unmute okay hello let me just get you added to the spotlight here how are you doing? Well, I'm kind of grateful right now. None of y'all can see my space because I'm we're redoing another house for my quilting studio and everything's everywhere. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you for asking. I, but that's a lot of people that can relate to that. But uh, I hope my question I sent in made sense. I, I didn't quite know how to word it. So, so what you said, any suggestions on the best way to cut accurately for applique if not using a cutting machine? So there's actually a couple of different ways that you can do it. You can either use the printable templates, okay, which we include, and um, they're usually mirrored. So sometimes we give you the, the mirrored version and the not mirrored version, but you want to use the mirrored version. You want to make sure that your printer will print accurately at 100%. So we include a six inch square, a six inch red square on every page. You only right. need to check it one time and, and then make sure that you use the same settings every time. But you want to um, print, say, let, let's say print one page and measure your square. Typically, if it's not measuring six inches, there's two reasons. One would be that you've got the default PDF setting to right. shrink to page. So you want to make sure that's set to 100%. The right. other reason, which we learned about last year after a very long time and not known this, is that if you're using the generic Windows driver for your printer, chances are it's not going to print accurately. So you want to make sure, like I have a, you can see it right here, maybe there. Um, I have a, <laughs> I have a brother laser printer, and we actually found out um, my computers always had the brother um, the brother printer driver, and I've never had a problem. When Cass was here and using that other laptop. I guess the printer had been installed with a generic Windows printer driver. And that laptop would never print PDFs at the right size. Wow. And for the longest time, we had no idea why. And then I had a computer guy come over and he was able to tell us it's because it's the generic printer driver. Okay. 
So you want to make sure that you have the brand specific printer driver for your printer if you are having any problems printing. Well, I printed it out and then I was trying to read and I thought, gosh, I think I'm just impatient. So I said, well, I got my light table out. I put the template underneath and I slapped the fabric on top and I traced it. And I'm pretty good at cutting, but I just, I was reading something else and somehow I just got confused and I'm sorry if this is taking up too much time, but no worries. Um, I, uh, I thought we were supposed to somehow, I, I don't know. It, I think there's a way where you can trace the, the uh, template onto uh, not that fabric, but what's it called? Uh, Diffusible webbing. Yes, and then put it on there. And I just wondered what might be the best. Someday I'll invest in another cutting machine, but I just never could get it to work the way I wanted to for the things I was specifically interested in. So okay. until I do that, I need to cut by hand. Okay, so if do you what kind of printer do you have? Well, right now I have an Epson, and I use the and it 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 um, inkjet versus la in inkjet or laser. Uh, inkjet okay so if you have an inkjet printer you can actually put apply your fusible webbing it and it's a little bit fabric it's not overly fabric um it, it, uh, what the heck is the word it's not an overly and it, it's not particularly economical but okay if if you have an inkjet printer, huh? then you can prepare your applique fabric with the fusible webbing on the back, keep the backing paper on, and you can cut eight by 11, um, eight and a half by 11 pieces of fusible webbing back fabric, and you can send them through an inkjet printer to print directly on it. Now, don't whatever you do, anybody listening, don't whatever you do, do that with a, a laser printer Not because you'll laser. melt the glue and it will mess up your machine and you just it's like going to be a big mess. But you can with an inkjet printer. Okay. So that saves the tracing part of it. Okay. Because once you've got the, you know, if you print the templates onto a piece of paper, you've got to trace it onto your fusible webbing, backing paper, then you apply that to your applique fabric and then you cut it out, and now you can finally use it, right? Now, okay. an, another way that you can do it without having to print anything is do it as you're actually stitching. So if you cut your piece of fabric a little bit bigger than the application, so you got, let's start backtrack one side, a second. Backing um, fusible webbing on the back of your fabric, right? Okay. Cut a piece of fusible webbing backed fabric with the backing paper still on so that it's a little bit bigger than the shape that you want to cut. Um, when you're at the machine and stitching the design, you'll stitch the placement line to show where to put the applique shape. And mm -hmm. then you can restitch it, having taken the thread out of the machine, at least the top thread. Now, if you take the top thread out of the machine, you need to be able to turn off the top thread sensor. Right. But if you put, so now you've got the placement line for the applique shape. Now yeah. you can put your piece of fusible webbing back fabric right side up on oh so that it's fully covering your applique shape hold it down in the corners with some scotch magic tape restitch it and it will punch holes in the backing paper on the fusible webbing right okay so now you've had the machine do the tracing you can guarantee that it's the correct size and if you cut right on the outside edge of the needle holes, then you you guarantee that your um your applique shape is going to fit. Does that make sense? It does. I was getting close to trying that, but I don't know what I was probably too worried about moving. 
So <laughs> I was a little bit off, but you know, it's still, and then I wasn't sure I understood the three, um, the three stitchings that happened with it. So it first in your designs, it stitches the placement. Then I would have put, let's pretend it was cut out already. Then I would have put the design down. It would kind of tack it down and then it does a finishing stitch. Is that correct? Well, with fusible web, so we use pre-cut pre -cut shapes with fusible webbing on the back, right? Okay. So if we look at this, little hot here um the background is a pale pink and this is one applique shape here this is another applique shape here the pale pink that you see beyond the edge is still the background okay right so you pre-cut your two applique shapes using the template provided or using the svg files the fcm files or um you, you using the placement line that's in the design, you're going to stitch a placement line that shows you exactly where to put the applique shapes. Mm -hmm. If you've got them pre-cut, however you managed, to, however you got there, mm -hmm. then you're going to fuse the applique shapes in place. And now there's no need to do a tack down stitch because the fusible is holding everything in place so then i would just bypass that one well you just stitch what the design tells you to stitch oh okay okay then i'm okay yeah. i got it. just stitch what the design tells you to stitch now um every now and then we might do a tack and trim in fact, on the applique version of this heart, um, essentially, on, on the applique version of this particular heart, you're going to stitch the heart onto a piece of background fabric, right? Okay. And any other applique shape. But this applique here and this applique here are the outside edges of the applique. So this stitching line around here is the outside edge of the applique. You don't have the the pale pink around right. the outside, but you do want to have something in the middle of it. Now, I decided I didn't want that to be a fused shape because that would make it really stiff. So in order to get this piece of fabric on the background fabric and underneath these two applique shapes, we actually, I'll give you a placement line, and then you put a piece of fabric over the top of it, and um, stitch a trimming line, okay. and then you're going to rough cut around the edge of it. Then you can stitch a placement line for these two applique shapes, put those applique shapes in place, and this raw edge is going to, have, going to be hidden. Right. Okay. I think right? that's a little confused because I'm used to doing it really the way you were just explaining. And so then I wasn't sure what I was doing. I It came out, but I'm not sure how I did it. <laughs> so thank you. If you, if you. if you literally just, you know, kind of follow the instructions and put your applique place in what, when it tells you to, then, then, then you'll come out good at the end. Yeah, it did. It really, I think I'm just not very trusting. <laughs> Okay, let's call let's call on let let's call on people who have, have done this who can help to elevate your trust in these designs. No, no, um, this is beautiful. No, it's me. Anybody I, got well, you know, any okay, so I see lots of people here. Um Judy stitched them, Andrea stitched a bunch, Brigitte has stitched a ton, Vicky has, Judy has Christine, ha you know, pretty much everybody in the room has stitched out lots of our applique designs. So um, Brigitte actually said in the comments that she uses the needle tracing, um, which we talked about. So stitch the applique placement line, restitch it with no thread in. That That's what um, Brigitte is referring to as needle placing. Um, yeah. 
or needle tracing. Um, so that, you know, there's so many different ways that you can do everything. Uh, for, for me particularly, because I like to kind of, I when I'm stitching, I'm usually in a hurry or I am working on that. <laughs> I am working on figuring out, you know, a bit more time so that we can take this in a bit more of a relaxed manner. But I like to do things in an assembly line fashion. So I do all of my cutting first, cut, cutting, cutting pieces of fabric. I do all of my applique fabric preparation. So cutting the pieces to size, putting the fusible webbing on the back, and then I'll sit with my cutting machine and cut all of the applique shapes in okay. one shot, right? Then when I go to my embroidery machine, I know that I don't have to get a pair of scissors out or go to the cutting machine or do anything. I can just stitch, right? That makes sense. Um, not no. everybody has got that, like, timeline um, or deadline, a live line, whatever the heck you want to call it, you know? <laughs> so if you're one of these, I would love to have the opportunity to just totally relax and do it in its own time, you know? And if you have that, then cutting it with the, um, doing the needle tracing is perfect. It helps, uh, you know, it, it's, it's almost like it helps you to be a, little bit more relaxed and meditative whilst you're doing the process well thank you that was that really was helpful I think when I say I'm not trusting I don't trust myself that I understood the instructions correctly I'm also dyslexic I mean medically dyslexic so sometimes things are confusing for me so then I don't think I understood but I think I, I think I actually did. So your instructions were very good because it, it I just was not sure if I understood what I did. So thank you. Anytime but you can jump on to our Zoom calls and I don't care how many times you come back and say, Sarah, help me understand this. Honestly, we have in in the I guess four years that we've been doing these Zoom calls. We've had people who would come back each week and say, tell me again. And I'm happy to t go through it as many times as it takes for you to be successful. Well, thank you. I Maybe now I'll get a little braver and I'll look into maybe getting a cutting machine again. Because honestly, I, I, I donated mine to the uh, quilt museum up here so they could, you know, make money with it. But. I just couldn't figure out how I was going to use it. But now I'm kind of interested in a lot of your applique things. So maybe I'll get another one. So thank you. You know, especially for the bigger projects where there's a lot of applique shapes, a yeah. cutting machine makes the world of difference. Yeah, I think so. So yeah. thank you. You are very welcome. Okay, let's see. Got to find my list of questions. Let me just have a quick look at the chat. I see there is a whole lot of chatting happening. Um, show so funny. How many people just got up and went to the printer to see if it's an inkjet or a laser? If you don't know, do not try printing onto fusible webbing. A lot of things could go really wrong. Okay. Did you guys all see Joe's new use for uh, a ruler? She sent me a photograph. She'd taken her OmniGrid ruler outside, stuck it in the snow. <laughs> and I was like, oh my goodness, that was so funny. 21 inches so far. Wow. Sharon, 30 inches. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Enough about the snow. Um, Andrea, coming to ask you to unmute here. 
Okay. So I've kind of got, I hit, I've just finished all my blocks and I absolutely love this quilt. I just finished all the applique, the borders, everything is done. But I still have PTSD from simply dreaming, quilting, and I really don't want to ruin these blocks. Now I have the magnetic hoop. But I did write out to um, a long armor that I, I know I see on Facebook, quilting is my bliss. And she would not do it because it would be too it would be too much money for her to quilt them individually. So is there a way now I'm just just doing fact finding information, but is there could I follow your instructions? Put the quilt together with the sashing into one piece without doing the quilting and then send it off to her to have it quilted? Yes. Yeah. And for everybody that doesn't know, we're talking about Mel's Practical Joy. And I absolutely love, love this quilt. Just, it is so happy. I love it. So good. You know what? It is going to get the original is going to go traveling with Shannon. She's going to, she's actually getting to do uh, quite a lot of um, speech, speaking engagements and teaching. And she's going to take the quilt with her and have it hanging behind her so that people can really just get into the whole joy thing so much faster. So let me just pull up a picture of the quilt and that will help to, um, I can point at things and. I mean, there's still a part of me that wants to quilt it in my machine but i'm just i just don't want to ruin any of the blocks because i just love them so much you know it's going to be really hard to ruin anything oh um, let me just i'm pretty good let, at that um I'm well, just, <laughs> let's have a look and we'll see what uh what you come up what you decide so can you see my screen Yes. Okay. So this is the Practical Joy quilt. Now, ha um, you've added all of the borders onto each of your blocks? Yes. Everything there. I even have all the batting cut out and the backing, but I don't, you know, yes. Okay. So if you wanted to stitch this up as a single, as, as a whole, you know, a, just the complete quilt top and then piece it. We've got half inch sashing between the blocks, right? So that's pretty easy to do. Um, um, let me I would just... have to trim the blocks like what you suggested. Yes, you'd have to trim the blocks. So let me just grab the instructions and... Practical joy construction. So this is going to be the trimming instructions. So for each of the blocks, you're still um you'll actually have a somewhat easier time of it with the trimming. Um, because as if you're just you'll just be creating sashing with one inch wide pieces of fabric stitching it on with a quarter inch seam allowance okay okay um so you'll want to trim the blocks exactly as specified so always measuring from the center of the block to the edge in both directions um at least for the first two sides, and then the second side you can measure from the from the freshly cut edge, right? Right. So trim the blocks exactly as specified. Then you'll want to go into the construction or the assembly. And this will go together um, pretty much exactly the same with the exception of the sashing. So instead of cutting your pieces to an one eighth of an inch wide, you're going to cut your pieces one inch wide. Right? 
because this this two and one eighth inch wide sashing is so that you can sash the front and the back at the same time. You just want to add sashing on the front. Oh, okay. So I'm not going to follow your the way you have it in that. No, no. You're simply going to piece the piece the blocks together with one inch wide pieces of fabric which will result in a half inch sashing by the time you piece it. So you've got a, a quarter inch seam allowance on both sides and a half inch in the center, which is why you've got one inch. Okay? okay. So one inch wide lengths of fabric, and then you'll be able to cut them the, the same length here. Right. So right. join number 14 is going to be 71 and a quarter inches by one inch. So anytime you see two and one eighth, rewrite that as one inch. Okay. okay? So then you'll have all of your joining strips. Um, and to join two blocks, it's you, you, you're not going to do any of this. Um you're literally going to take your two blocks that you want to join together, stitch your piece of sashing to one side with your quarter inch seam, and then stitch it to the other side with your quarter inch seam. Now, the two blocks are going to meet in the middle at the back. Right? Yes. Because you've just got a half inch wide piece of sashing on the front. Um, so as long as you... And you can literally ignore all of this. Um, as long as you start here. So join number one is these two blocks here. So you're just going to stitch those two together. You don't even need to trim them. Um, they should automatically measure that amount. When you are doing the sashing when you're joining quilted blocks, what I found was that you could um, gain a little tiny bit every time you had a, had a join, right? Um, so your blocks should automatically wind up at that, assuming you've got good quarter inch seam. So that's your first join. Your second join is gonna be this one here. So just follow. Yeah. All the way through to the end. And eventually, let's see, eventually, you'll end up with, we haven't got there just yet. Um, you'll end up with the two pieces and that one last join. So that's your join 14 there. So at that point, you've now got your completed quilt top, right? Right. But you're literally quilt top only. There's no batting involved. There's no backing involved. Now, your long arm quilter would more than likely be totally delighted to quilt that. I'm thinking yes. they would more than, that. they're definitely going to want a single piece of batting and probably a single piece of backing fabric as well. Yeah, she it's, likes to use wool to make the custom show up, and she would definitely not go over any of the applique shapes. Um, yeah, well, there's there's no way that you're going to be quilt. Anybody's going to be quilting through the applique shapes, yeah. I don't think. But yeah, <laughs> wool batting. I I love wool batting. If I'm doing free motion quilting on a on a reg, you know, domestic machine or a long arm machine, wool batting. This will, will look stunning. Yeah, it will give the, the, it, the little trapunto like effect. Right, but on the flip side, if I was to do the this myself, because I really want to try, because I do. Your process is very hard, but when I finish it, I've learned a lot, and I've you learn your embroidery machine inside and out. I mean, so. So when you're doing the smaller blocks, am I, because the dime hoop is so big, am I going to have to add fabric to some of the smaller blocks so my dime hoop fits or? Which, mach which machine do you have? I have the 880 plus. Okay. So you, which, 
hoops do you have? I was going to use the dime magnetic hoop for the quilting part. The 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 mega one, whatever it's called, the so, large. So you got one. the the biggest one, the jumbo hoop yeah. size. Okay. So what I actually suggest is having four pieces of scrap fabric that are four to six inches wide that you absolutely don't care about, right? Right. And when you have the smaller blocks, let me just share my screen again. So, or actually for any of the blocks, whenever you're quilting any of the blocks, so that you minimize the amount of batting and backing fabric, let this guy here, this this little one here, I think is the smallest of all of the blocks. So even if you're quilting this one, which is the biggest of the blocks, to make it easy to get up to the edges, if you based your strips of fabric on all four sides of the block that you're going to be quilting, that will, and baste it to the backing fabric, that will extend your backing fabric so that you can guarantee that you get everything in in the hoop, right? Right. And you can just rip it off and reuse it for each of the blocks. Okay, so I probably would have done it on the actual block. So that's good to know that I would do it on the backing fabric, the additional sizes. Well, that makes sense even, now. Yeah, even with the... So once you've finished each of these blocks, that's, they're a little bit supersized to give you some leeway with the trimming. But the batting and the backing fabric are always going to be the biggest part of the equation, right? So right. let's say yes. your batting and backing fabric are this big and the quilt top is going to be a little bit smaller. Now, I try and save as much fabric as possible, so it might only be a couple of inches smaller, which is why if you base the scraps onto the backing fabric then that's going to maximize your space yeah that makes sense very good idea i never would have thought of that that really good idea so yeah whenever you're quilting in the hoop and you're getting up to the edge of the design you can just use a scrap piece to extend your piece of fabric i don't know if you can hear that but we have a uh, rainstorm going on outside and a helicopter is flying right over the house <laughs> don't know if that's going to be picked up on the microphone or not but that got really loud just then now okay i have a lot to think about because i do think i could do your idea with the one inch sashing after i trim them i think that would be very doable for me so um, Jump into the Facebook group and ask people about their experience of quilting in the hoop. I know that when you first try it, it seems like it takes an age to get everything situated and get the design aligned. I can guarantee you that once you've done it a few times, it gets easier every single time. And it's almost like everybody has a light bulb moment. Some people, it happens after the second or third time of trying it. Some people, it takes 10 or 12 or even 20 times of doing it. But everybody has that light bulb moment when you finally figure out, you know what, this is actually really easy. Yeah, because I have everything cut out. The backings are all cut out, the batting and, you know. So, so start with the littlest block first. Okay. And then if, if you know, if if it... If something goes horribly wrong, and I highly doubt that it will, it's not going to be such a big deal. Okay. I, I, I'll i think about it. So, yeah. It, <laughs> thank you, though. It gives me a lot to think about. You're welcome. A you lot of options. Have lots thank of you. options. Yes, lots of options. That's what I love. So, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Let me know how you get on. Okay, I will. Okay. Let's see. Where do my questions go? Ruth has a question and um 
She's not actually here right now. Ruth um, was asking last time, I think, about the um, quilting, the heart-to-heart quilt. And she's actually asked, what's the name of the tiny heart striped fabric that I used in the twin heart size? Okay, let's read this. What's the name of the tiny heart stripe fabric on the twin size heart to heart well you know Ruth I don't actually remember um and I did have a look in the instructions and I didn't specify the actual fabrics we went more with color rather than specific fabrics that's usually one of the challenges of using fabrics that are not basics we typically endeavor to use basic fabric lines, which is why we use a lot of grunge. We use a lot of um, fairy frost from Michael Miller. This garden pin dot from Michael Miller is one of their basics because we can guarantee that those fabrics are going to be around for a long time. Um, I know for the um, for the twin size version of the heart to heart quilt, we made that for Heather and she wanted, um, you know, so specific look to her quilt. And we went shopping and found lots of pale pink prints. Um, and I don't actually remember them. And even if I did, it's highly unlikely. Um, we made that quilt back in 2020. It's actually highly unlikely that you would be able to find those prints still. So I would say instead of looking for the specific fabric, I would go for a lookalike fabric. So Let's say it's a pale pink stripe, a pale pink small stripe. Just just look for a pale pink small striped fabric that's not necessarily the exact same one. Um, but you know that um it's it it's going to be similar. Um okay, let me see. Last time we um Ruth had also asked about you um using the template plastic in the hoop for quilting the heart to heart blocks individually and she was having a little bit of a hard time imagining how that works so I have a version of that right here I want to just let you know the piece of stabilizer I have literally taped onto the hoop is purely so that you can see the template plastic. When you're using this technique, it's a way of getting beyond the stabilizer, as in you don't need any stabilizer at all. So the only reason this particular piece of stabilizer is here is to make it easy to see the lines on the plastic. Um, you can see I've got the plastic here and it just made it a little bit easier to see all the lines. So when you are, um, working with the heart to heart blocks and you're quilting the blocks in the hoop um in order to minimize the amount of fabric i came up with this plan of using a piece of template plastic in the hoop so the template plastic is literally stuck to the back of my hoop so i put the template plastic on the table put the whole hoop with the inside hoop, the inner part of the hoop tight in the outside of the hoop, put the whole hoop on the piece of template plastic and drew around it. And I even drew around the little knobby bit here. I'm not quite sure if you can see that template plastic here. Um, it was a little tiny bit shorter than the hoop, but that's not too big of a deal because I can still tape all the way around. So I used double-sided quilters tape to hold the template plastic onto the bottom of the hoop. Now, anytime I talk about sticky stuff on hoops, a lot of people get worried about the fact that their hoop is gonna get all gummed up. So I have a supply of these guys under my kitchen sink. Um, Scotch-Brite Dobie Stay Clean Scrubbers, or you probably heard of the purple thing that is used as a turning tool. Well, this is the other purple thing that I highly recommend 
for your studio. Um, it's a sponge on one side, and this other side is remarkable at getting sticky stuff off your pots and pans, and it works wonders at getting sticky stuff off your hoop. So you can use this ever so slightly rough side and just hold your hoop underneath a running tap, warm, not hot water, and just rub on it gently with this. That sticky stuff will be gone in next to no time and you will have a beautifully clean hoop. So I love those. I have not stay uh, thread off there. I love those. I have a stash of them under my kitchen sink. So, okay. So you've got your piece of template plastic. You've got it stuck to the back of your hoop. And you're going to have a piece of template plastic for each size of block. Now, let's say you are stitching up. Let me show you a picture here. The heart to heart baby quilt can be stitched up a bunch of different ways. And you can stitch it up so that you quilt each block in the hoop and then join the blocks together with sashing. So very much like um, we're actually quilting um, practical Mel's Practical Joy, you're quilting them one by one. Now, the, the this baby size quilt has six inch finished blocks. Let's say you decide, you go all the way down here. There are three different ways you can put this together, but let's say you decide, I wanna make something a bit bigger and use the medium sized heart. So these blocks finish up at seven and a half inches square. You're going to trim them to nine inches and then they get joined with sashing. Now you could actually use the brand new technique that we created for Practical Joy um, to stitch these guys together, but you're gonna be quilting them in the hoop. Now, finish size, seven and a half inches. We're gonna be having a piece of batting that is um, 10 inches. The trim size, seven and a half inches with the sashing is the trim size is actually gonna be nine inches. We're using a piece of batting that is 10 inches square and the backing is just a little tiny bit bigger at 10 and a half. So if you imagine a 10 inch square, in this particular hoop, which is a Benina Maxi hoop, it is 15 inches from here to here. It's eight and a bit inches across here. I don't actually know and I've lost my ruler. Oh, we got a tape measure. It's actually the inside measurement of this hoop, and I've never actually done this before, is nine inches pretty much nine inches inside edge to inside edge for this hoop. So there's no way that you can hoop a 10 inch square in here. So you either have to figure out a smaller hoop, which if you're on a banana machine, it's hard luck, you don't have one. Um, or you have to use a giant piece of batting and backing fabric and I don't necessarily want to do that because that can be very wasteful. So put your piece of template plastic, stick it onto the back of your hoop. The designs for quilting have a basin line around them, which indicate the finished size of the block. And you're going to load the, uh, load the design into the machine and in the corners, and I'm, thinking that you're barely going to be able to see them in the corners, you're going to put the needle down into this template plastic and it's literally marking the corners. So there are four, I think you can see that one there. There are four um, needle holes representing the corners of the designs. Draw a square connecting the dots then draw another square that is a quarter inch bigger because you want a little bit of a leeway when you're actually quilting the, um, when you're actually doing the quilting. And you also want to draw your vertical 
and horizontal center line so that you can um, get everything aligned neatly and accurately. Now, you'll see up here, I've got a dotted line and another dotted line down here. And I've labeled that batting, but it's, so the batting is 10 inches square. So from the center to the top, I've got five inches from the center down to the bottom here, I've got five inches. So 10 inches dotted line to dotted line. The backing fabric is 10 and a half. So I've got another line up here, label backing. The instructions are all in the document. Um, so we have a, a placement line for our backing fabric. We've got our placement line for the batting and we've got our line for the size of the design. Once you've got everything marked up, you're actually going to cut on this line here. So this black square, you're going to cut that out using your rotary cutter. So you wind up with a piece of template plastic in your hoop that has a hole in it. So when you use this to quilt each of your blocks, you're going to place your backing fabric on the back of the hoop, on the back of the template plastic. So it's lined up with the backing place, uh, the backing placement line and centered using the vertical because we can't get 10 inches out this way. On the top of the plastic, you're going to put your batting down so that it's centered using the placement line here and here. And then you're going to put the piece of fat, your background fabric, which may or may not have an applique design on it. So you're gonna get that centered over the batting. Tape it all down using Scotch Magic tape. And then you can go to the machine and stitch your quilting design. If you have an applique on here, for the Heart to Heart collection, there is a little bit of a alignment line so that you can fine tune the position of your quilting design, but you've essentially minimized the amount of waste which I'm very old, I'm all for minimizing the amount of waste of fabric and batting. And you don't need a piece of stabilizer in there. So your finished thing is literally, apart from the applique shape, you've literally got your backing background fabric, you've got a piece of batting and you've got your backing fabric. So you end up with a nice soft quilt, as soft as it would be if you had done free motion quilting or quilting it on a long arm machine. So that only really works for um, stitching up blocks that you want to um, quilt in the hoop and then you're gonna join them together with the sashing. Um, Andrea, when you come to be quilting them, uh, the practical joy blocks, you can also utilize the grid on that comes with your hoop. And if you don't have a hoop, you can always make a, a, a grid template from a piece of template plastic. You want to trace the inside of your hoop. This thing literally sits right inside the inner hoop. And the banana hoops come with little clips on them. I have got it centered. So that sits right inside the hoop. You can use this to help you position the hoop to load the quilt into the machine. So if you were to take the uh, the design worksheet for the design, you have to excuse my printer. It doesn't like printing these days. Um, so it's a bit of a mess. But I got the hoop center line on the quilting design. I can tape that to the back of my template and then I can put this on the quilt so that the quilting design is exactly where it needs to go. And for any of the quilting designs that you can usually see, my printer is actually not printing very well at all, um, but you can usually see the, the various placement lines so you can get those aligned 
with what what they need to be aligned with on the quilt. So once you've got this on the quilt, you can tape it to the quilt and then put your inner hoop on top of it so it's in place around the template. You can even use double-sided tape on the bottom of the inner part of your hoop to hold that, it will kind of stick it to the quilt. Then you wrap the quilt around the hoop or the inner part of the hoop, lift it up, place it down into the outer part of the hoop. So that will help you get um, the quilt in the hoop reasonably accurately. Now you're still more than likely going to need to do a little bit of fine tuning to the positioning on of the quilting design. And that's usually the part that people have the most trouble with. But once you've kind once you've got the hang of it, it will go a lot faster. So bear in mind the first couple of times that you try it, it might take a while, but as you get used to it, it will get easier and it will get faster. So I hope that has helped. Um, I'm actually really glad that Ruth had asked about that um, using the template plastic because we more than likely will use that same technique for quilting the Awakened Heart Quilt. Um, it will save us on batting, it will save us on backing fabric, and it will allow us to do some quilting in the hoop, which is still nice and soft because there won't be any stabilizer anywhere in the quilt sandwich, except for underneath the applique shapes. Okay, um, where do I get the template material from? As Joe said, you can get it at Joanne's. Um, you can also order it on Amazon. Um, I think it's by Dritz, although I'm not 100% sure, but if you just search for template plastic, um, it comes up. Um, I have not found it by the yard. It comes in sheets. I think they're 12 inches by 18 inches, something like that. So they should be big enough for most hoops. If you have a hoop that is bigger, scotch tape on the, uh, put two pieces edge to edge and tape them together um, with scotch magic tape. One thing when you're drawing your lines, you want to make sure that you are using a permanent marker because if it's not a permanent marker, the lines will smudge and it gets messy. Um, I think I used a big intensity pen. No, I didn't. I used a brand new permanent marker. So like a Sharpie, Sharpie marker or something like that. Um, otherwise, the lines will smudge. If you don't have a permanent marker on hand and you're like, I absolutely have to do this right now, use a marker that you do have on hand and then just, so draw the line and then immediately cover it with a piece of Scotch magic tape. And then it won't, um, it won't smudge. Okay. Beryl is on YouTube right now. She said, hey, Sarah, I'm on YouTube today just for something different. Beryl, I'm very happy that you're here. And Marianne is watching on Facebook. Thank you, everybody who has joined me in our Zoom room today. It is always good to see you guys. There's a couple of faces I haven't seen in a really long time. Carol and Sue being one of them. So good to see you today. And let's see. March has five Fridays. We are currently on the third Friday, so we will be back two weeks from today on the fifth Friday. I think it might actually be Good Friday. In fact, I think it has to be Good Friday because um, Easter is the last weekend of March this year. So we will be here on Good Friday for our show and share. We haven't had a specific show and share in quite a long time. So whatever you've been working on, designs for Meaning of Life designs, I would love to see what you have created whether it's finished or in progress. So Andrea, if you can come back again and show us where you're at with your practical joy quilt, Juliana, show us what you've been up to with your awakened hearts. Anything you've been working on, bring it to show us. You never know who is going to be inspired by your color choices and anything that you might have figured out in the process of creating. So I will see you guys in 
two weeks from today. Have a fabulous weekend. I actually got fingers and toes crossed that Colorado snow is going to be melting or at least, I don't know what, piled up on the side of the road or something so that Joe and Doug can get down here to Phoenix. Um, Joe, I'm going to just say I'm going to see you on Sunday or at least next week. So be safe, have fun stitching, and I'll 